some praise. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah. We will rejoice and be glad in it.
grief. Uh, families, uh, don't forget about Elder Baxter. Amen. And uh, Sister Deborah. General also. Let's keep him lifted in prayer. Uh, this uh, time after general is a uh, time when you find um, how much you miss your loved ones. So let's keep them lifted in prayer. Uh, this Sunday, uh, we are wearing teal. If you don't have teal, wear blue or green uh, in um, honor of cervical cancer. Uh, in, 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 in awareness of cervical cancer. Amen. On the first Sunday, uh, we will have um, foot, a jersey Sunday, not football. If you don't have a football jersey, just wear what you got. Amen. Your favorite team's jersey. Amen. Um, that is our announcement for this evening. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for your wisdom. We ask you now, Lord God, to continue to pour yourself out upon us and in us and through us, Lord God, have your way. We bless you on tonight, Father God, on this worship on Wednesday night, Lord God. Help us to uh, begin to worship you every day and every moment, Lord God, because you're good. You've been so good. You've been better than good. And we thank you, Lord God, for just loving us and keeping us, Father God. We ask you on tonight, Lord God, that you would continue to Allow your glory to reign over this place, Lord God. Let your spirit dwell in this temple, in us, Lord God. For those of us who love you, have your way. We thank you for the word that's coming on tonight, Father God. Have your way in that vessel. Let us, Lord God, hear everything that you have to say. Let us see everything that we need to see that our hearts of stone be turned to hearts of flesh. Let our wisdom, your wisdom, Lord God, reign in and through us, Lord God. We ask you now, Lord God, that you allow him to say everything that you've given to him. Use him in a mighty way. Lord, we thank you for our pastor and his wife, Lord God. Put your loving arms around them. We call forth, Lord God, uh, um, your fence, Lord God, of protection over them, Lord God. The enemy's mad, Lord God, because they're still putting one foot before the other for the cause of you. So we thank you tonight, Lord God, for loving them, Lord God. We speak truth. On tonight, Lord God, we speak everything that you've said, every promise that you've said about them, Lord God. We know it's going to come forth. So, devil, we call you a liar on tonight. We thank you, God, for being true. We thank you, Lord God, for being triumphant. Lord God, we know in you there is victory. So we thank and praise you. We honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. I just want to praise you forever and ever and ever.
just want to praise you forever and ever and ever and ever, and ever. You ran. 
Jesus can. Hallelujah. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I worship Worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Yeah, yeah, right there. Hallelujah. Come on, just worship him right there. And just thank him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love you with everything Hallelujah. we got tonight, Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Without you, God, we would be like a ship without a sail. We would be tossed and driven Hallelujah. on the sea, oh God, Lord. But your grace and your mercy has kept us, you, and it's keeping us, oh God. So we just thank you on tonight thank you. Thank as we prepare our hearts for the word of God on tonight. We ask that you would move and that you would minister to us. We lift up the man of God that will preach and teach your word on tonight. Settle him down in the spirit, oh God. Allow him to move with holy boldness. We thank you in advance for the victory that's already won. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, give God some glory right there. 
I'm talking to the people that love him more than anything tonight. I'm talking to the ones that God's done something for. He's made a way out of no way. Hallelujah. He's come to your rescue just when you needed him the most. That's the ones I'm talking to tonight. Hallelujah. He is a good God. He's a great God. Hallelujah. We thank him on tonight. Amen. For what's about to happen in this place. We give God glory. Hallelujah. For what he's going to do. Amen. We stand in anticipation for this word on tonight by Elder Lonzo. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask everyone that can move up towards the front. Hallelujah. Come on, everyone that can move up to the front. Come on, come on, come on. Let's be intimate tonight. As we get prepared tonight, that's a good spot right there just to, to meditate on what God's about to say to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take my breath away. Hallelujah.
Hey man, how many are just desperate? Hey, let me tell you something. This just this, this is for this crowd tonight. Y'all know I, I like it real close. I like it intimate because we're a family. But part of that is because I understand that part of my mantle is I'm a bridge builder. Hey man, I'm a connective. I'm a bridge builder. Now the only thing that don't get built in this bridge is stuff that don't want to be in the bridge. I, I'm, I'm going to say that again. The only people that won't connect are people that don't want to connect. We are a family, y'all. And I just like it close. I just like it intimate. Because see, sometimes we need to be sitting beside somebody that has the spark for our oil. See, a match without a striker is useless. It's just a match. So sometimes I need to be sitting beside somebody that might have a little bit more fire going on today than I do. And I take my little bit of oil and I connect it with their fire and we catch on fire. The old folks used to say, catch on fire. Did they say that, my bad? Catch on fire up in here. Anybody need to catch on fire up in here? I need to catch on fire. Hey, Amen. Now, y'all know I was nervous as a long tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs. And the reason for that is because this is serious. Y'all, y'all, and I'm just, let me explain something to you, too. I don't stand behind that sacred desk because that sacred desk is reserved. Amen. For my father and my pastor. Amen. So I come down here over the flow. Amen. And keep it real simple and keep it real intimate. Amen. Is that all right? Amen. Y'all my family, man. I love y'all. And no matter what I say tonight, remember I love you. Remember I will lay my life down for you. Remember my pastor, we want to give honor to God tonight, first of all, for just another wonderful opportunity that he has provided for us. Do y'all know this is a Hey, look, let me tell you, let me tell you how, 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 how monumentous this particular moment is. Because we play past things sometimes, come see, come saw. This Zoe, this Kairos moment in time was divinely orchestrated by God for us long before we even got here. This was divinely orchestrated for us to be here, to connect with them, to connect with each other. If I say I'm connected to God and I'm not connected to you, I'm a liar and the truth ain't in me. Remember one of the seven things that God hates is he who soweth discord. Well, guess what a discord is? A discord is a disconnected cord. He has no power. Not connected to anything. Hey man, I've been at my place I'm just flicking stuff. Like, well, that light don't come on. Why the light don't come on? Because it ain't plugged in. Hey Amen. Hey Amen. So tonight we just look. I just come to encourage us tonight. Hey Amen. Y'all know I'm a cheerleader. You know, and, 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 and to put your heart at ease, let me tell you something. I don't say anything in this house unless I first had it vetted by my father. Hey Amen. Amen. So I said it to him. He said, back preach, boy. I said, yes, sir. Amen. Amen. So tonight, I got a couple of scriptures we want to look at. Amen. Tonight is just a little Bible study. You know, Sunday school lesson. Amen. Something that hopefully will encourage you. I'm, I'm just a cheerleader tonight. I'm telling you, I'm sweating already. Man, I'm nervous. It's a, I'm going to say it again. A long-tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs. Help me, Smooth. I need some help. Say amen, son. Look, and so tonight, anytime I'm here, please feel free to stop me at any moment if I say something that you don't understand. Because application without understanding hinders application. I mean, acquisition, I'm sorry. Acquisition without understanding hinders application that thwarts manifestation. We acquire to apply 
acquisition is for application. Every prophetic manifestation is preceded by a prophetic instruction. Heed the instruction, get the manifestation. And this is for the preachers in the house. Hey, y'all, we don't have to go outside the anointing of our lineage to try to find fresh revelation to preach. Stay in line, stay under the anointing, and the same manifestations that our lineage gets, we'll get. The street said like this, if I do what they, they do, I'll get what they, they got. Amen. Amen. So tonight we're going to look at two scriptures. We're going to look at Psalms 133. Amen. And then we're going to look at Hebrews 10 and 24. And I'm going to read Psalms 133 out of the New International Version. Amen. And we'll speak to you tonight on the subject. We all in this thing together. Amen. Father, we just thank you again for this wonderful opportunity. Father, God, help me now to say what you have said to me. Help me to speak it clearly. Help me, Father God, to be a help, to encourage, and, 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 and just, just love on your people tonight, oh God. Help us now, sir, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, Psalms 133 says, How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. It is like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down on the collar of his robe. It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion. For there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. Let me get that out of the King James. And it says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren and sistering to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garment as the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountain of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Amen. So I've just come tonight with a simple little Bible study, Sunday school lesson, to encourage and exhort, not to be too exegetical with the text, but prayerfully to extract from the text examples of its application. Remember, acquisition is for application that manifestation may occur and the subsequent manifestation following. Amen? To inspire us to awake and arise for the glory of the Lord has risen upon us. <laughs> to embrace the grace and each other. Amen. I was just, I was just waiting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> to submit to the process following the instructions that we may engage the battle, the fight for our lives, our families, the unsaved, the kingdom, our communities, our cities. Amen? We got to engage the battle. But this is no long ranger. I never did like long ranger growing up. I don't know why I didn't like it. I understand now. I need a family. I need a team. I need some people that I know pray for me. I need some people to pray for. I heard a baby pray on the line the other day. She prayed for everybody. Amen. And then look, this is the model of my family. I tell my family, I bring one of my grandkids over there, I'll tell you right now what I tell them about my family. Nobody outside of this family is going to support us more, encourage us more, pray for us more, or care for us more than we do for each other. That's how we're going to do family. That's how we do family. So I'm, I'm declaring it to the Potter's house. Nobody is going to pray for us more, encourage us more, support us more, or be there for us more than we are for each other. If they ain't in the family, they don't need to know family business. If they ain't in the Potter's house, they don't need to know what's going on in the Potter's house. Tell them, come see. If you see it, don't say it unless you're going to pray it and pray it before you say it. 
Because if God has revealed something to you about somebody else, that's simply for you to pray, not to say. Y'all think I'm fussing. I ain't fussing. I love y'all. Remember? I told you whatever I say. No matter what, I love you. Amen. Our grandfather has prophetically declared this to be a season of spiritual awakening and revival and kingdom connection, a season where we are to pray again, to saturate, bathe, immerse, encircling a thing in prayer, to push, to pray until something happens. How many of us have had something that we were praying for or somebody that we were praying for and we prayed a couple of days and then we quit? You just tell the truth. Amen. I started out on this thing. I'm going to pray for this thing for 14 days and about three days in. I don't even want to get up. I forgot. Amen. But we got to pray until something happens. We have to bathe that thing in prayer. You know, let me encourage you. <coughs> Excuse me. Start a prayer journal. Start a gratitude list and a prayer journal. And if you start a gratitude list and a prayer journal, I guarantee you at some point your gratitude list will outnumber your prayer journal. But then when your gratitude list outnumbers your prayer journal, then increase your prayer journal. And just keep that thing going. Watch what happens. Amen? Just watch what happens. Our father, a bishop, has prophetically declared over us that this is a house on fire. Anybody feel a fire in here? I tell you what, it feel like some fire in here. I'm hiding and I'm sweating. It's hot up in here. How good is God? It was cold in here about a couple weeks ago. Hey Amen. God is doing great things in this house, y'all. Let me tell you, you guys are phenomenal people. We asked you guys to, to give a sacrificial seed toward the heat. And you guys did phenomenal. And we were able to make a payment. And then when we were able to do what we were able to do in the natural, God put his super on top of the natural and sent a pecuniary benefactor that paid the whole bill off. Now, I know some of y'all just shouting because it's warm. And that's okay. Let the redeemed. He hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Amen. God, the enemy is can be cold. The enemy can stop you from coming to church. Some folks don't come to church because it's raining, it's too cold. I don't want to be, I don't want to see them. I don't want to hear them preach. I sure don't want to hear that little crazy country boy get up there and jump around and scream and talk about he was a dope fiend for 26 years. Blah, 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 blah. But guess what? If you don't want to hear that, then amen. Close your ears when I get to that part. But that's my testimony. See, every one of us have had that life-changing encounter with God that turned our life around. Amen. Hey, look, I think, guess what? Y'all gonna think I'm crazy. I thank God for crack cocaine. Because if it hadn't been for the affliction of crack cocaine, I may not know God the way I know God. I may not know that I can cry out to God the way I need to cry out to God. I may not need to know. See, because crack can make you pray some real live prayer now. I'm talking about having a real conversation with God. I'm not talking about that Father God, thou art holy forever and forever. I ain't never prayed like that. Lord, help me. Now, that's my dilemma. But David said it like this. It was good that I had been afflicted. That I might know the power of God for real in my life. Then you put you plug your little affliction in there. You just plug it in there, right there, and just think about it right there for a minute. Think about where he was when he found you. Because he ain't never been lost. So you didn't find him when he found you and what you was doing and what you would still be doing had he not found you. Let me bring it all the way down. Let me put the hay down where the ghost can get it. 
but you still be thinking about doing it. And the only reason some of us don't do it because we done got too old to do it. We just can't do it like we used to. So don't get it twisted. You know, I used to think old people are old people. Now, I love old people. I'm over the senior ministry. They're the, they the greatest resource we got. And they full of wisdom. They full of love. But I like to be around real old people that tell me about the juke joints and the bootleg joints and the and bootlegging and the liquor and the stanky leg. Y'all know the stanky leg? Yeah, y'all know what the stanky leg is? Whatever it is. It was stanky leg in their time. It's twerking. I don't know what it is now. I don't know what the, hey man, it's been a while. But plug yours in right there where you were when God found you. See, our praise is personal. Our praise emanates from our own personal encounters with God. And we've all had one. Amen. I thank God we have one. It's that encounter that got us here tonight. Who'd have thought about going to church on a Wednesday night? It's raining outside. Who'd have thought, who'd have thought about dancing? Didn't they dance? And man, I love watching them. Man, they're like angels when they dance like that, man. Man, I love those babies, man. Didn't they sing? Didn't they praise them? Man, Elder Ron and, and the sister, man, they smooth. Man, the DJ got that thing. Y'all know DJ got that thing. You ever see DJ when she be singing? She got that thing. I be like, boy, DJ in God's face. I'm jealous. Amen. Amen. So our Father has prophetically declared that this is a house on fire and that we can bank on it. <laughs> you can take that to the bank. If God said it, you can cash that check. If he said it, you can bank on it. That this is a season of, we back on that word again, fresh fire. Maybe that's why I'm so hot. Fresh fire, a time of refreshing and restoration. A year that calls for us to walk as the church of the living God. Walking as the corporate organism of the embodiment of the presence and the power of his Christ. Walking in fresh oil and fresh fire. A shift has occurred. Anybody felt a shift in your life? Anybody felt God turning you? He's turned you again. Amen. A shift in our momentum. Y'all feel it picking up? Y'all feel, feel it? I'm beginning to sense it. It's picking up. I'm beginning, we're seeing new faces, and they're coming in working. We had a whole family. They came in. They sat in one Sunday, and from that Sunday on, they've been in the nursery keeping kids. And then I've been watching it. Ten kids, 15 kids, 25 kids. 30 kids, they came in the door working. It's a shift, that's a momentum. Amen. It's progressive and aggressive development. It's forward moving. Movement, catapulting us on the journey. See, sometimes new folk got to come in and do some stuff to get old folk to move. Amen. It was two old guys sitting on a porch one day down south. They were sipping some Go on. They were sipping some lemonade. Oh, hound dog came up on the porch and sat down between them. Sat down on the nail. Start howling. Oh, oh. The one old guy looked over at the other. He said, Man, how don't you tell that old dog to move? Oh, brother took a sip of the lemonade. He said, When the pain get great enough, He'll move. See, sometimes the fear or the pain of maybe being replaced will cause somebody to move. You'll move in a new energy. You move with a new, you move with a new vigor. Amen. But it's not the fact that somebody's coming to replace you. They're coming to, to elevate you. See, we don't compete, we complete. See, if you think somebody's moving you, then that might be God not moving you out but moving you up because we know promotion comes from God. He might have something else for you to do, but the problem with us is we be, oh, my God, I didn't want to fuck. No, I love you. The problem with us is we become territorial in positions and we refuse to move. God said it's chess, not checkers. I got pieces 
that not only move over, but they'll move around. They can move a long way. Am I not God? Am I not the potter? Can I not do with the clay what I want to? What we have to learn to do is acquiesce to the plans, methods, and strategies of God. What does that mean? Job 22, 21. Acquaint now ourselves with him. Acquaint means to be and agree with him. See, if we, look, I, I said something yesterday, man, it's some folk around right here spending some time in God's face. And you can tell it the same way the sermon girl could tell that Peter had been with Jesus because his speech gave him away. Listen to their conversation. You'll know they've been in God's presence. If they gossiping, backbiting, complaining, making excuses, they ain't been in God's face. If they praising, glorifying, helping, encouraging, exhorting, saying, how can I pray for you? How can I help you if they're here? I seen some people show up yesterday just after clear blue. I'm going to call her name. I seen Sister Tish show up yesterday. Sister Tish show up yesterday. I don't even know if they own the food service committee, if they own hospitality, but they was in there just serving. I was feeling kind of funny. So shoot, I got up. I start carrying stuff. See, that thing will get contagious. You get excited about God. The Bible says, serve the Lord with enthusiasm. We got to get excited. That's what fire, when you get on fire for real, we get on fire about other stuff. Hey, tax return. Hey, got that, hey, got that check. Hey, got that, go, hey, got that new hair. Hey, we get on fire about everything, stuff that don't even matter. Let's catch on fire for Jesus. Amen. This is a house on fire. Woo. Our mobilization. There's been a shift in our mobilization. Amen. After the transition, there was a transition that occurred. The missiology didn't change. It's still souls for Jesus. It's still impact, increase, and influence. The demographic, our spheres of influence. But the methodology may change. The missiology is still the same. Amen. So our momentum, progressive and aggressive development, our mobilization, prepare forces for action, organize people and resources for purpose, divine hookups. I'm not talking about them kind of hookups. Them kind of hookups ain't divine. You did that. God, did, God ain't in that. How do you know? Because when the hookup is over, you feel some kind of way. You on this altar on Sunday morning, crying out to God. Amen. He a good, good father. He said, you still my baby. Come on, I love you. But that's where we be. Amen. <laughs> Divine hookups unifying the house. There's a shift in our maneuverability, too. It's skilled or militaristic movement, advantageous, control change, of course. We are more agile, mobile, and hostile. Y'all remember the Titans? Oh, Y'all remember that they were doing that? Y'all remember they told them that? They went out there, them boys, they just be agile, mobile, hostile. Amen. That's what we got to be in the kingdom. We got to be agile. We got to be mobile. We got to be hostile. We got to be agile enough to be pliable in the hands of God that we can acquiesce at any time to his plans, methods, and strategies. That we don't, his agenda trumps our agenda and any other hidden agenda that we might have. Amen. Whatever he say, go. That's it. That's all. And our pastor has declared we're ready for it. Somebody say, I'm ready for it. <laughs> I'm glad you said that. <laughs> I am glad you said that. So here's what you really said I'm ready for. You're ready for prayer and prophesying. Amen. It's a season of intense prayer. God is calling us between the porch 
and the altar. He is desiring us to cry out to him for help. With our ears attentive, wait a minute, who is that? That's not Jesus. Here, come get this thing. Turn that thing off for me. Amen. He is desiring us to cry out to him for help with our ears attentive for punctilious instruction. And what does punctilious mean? I had to, you know, I got this from my daddy, so I had to go look it up. I'm becoming a wordsmith. Amen. It means clear, concise, authoritative instruction. Remember earlier I said we got to follow, trust the process, follow the instructions. Amen. A season of intense prophesying. Now, here's where we all can get a part of this, right? A time of great encouragement. Celebrate one another. Celebrate the grace that's on the life of someone else. Applaud them. Assist them. Accentuate them. Accept them. That grace that's on their life just may be for you. Don't criticize or condemn. Compliment. Have a real conversation. I was having a conversation with Chantel not too long ago. And I gave her this term that God dropped in my spirit. I said, look this up and tell me what you what, what the Lord tell you about it. It's called effective communication. We have to learn to communicate effectively. That means we got to talk to one another, y'all. But not only talk to one another. We have to listen to what's being said in response. See, most of us, when we're having a conversation with somebody, we'll say something, they start to say something back. Before they even finish what they're saying, we're already formulating a response to what we think they're saying. And at the moment that we begin to formulate our response to what we think they're saying, guess what just happened? We stopped listening. We started thinking and stop listening. So now, I may not even really understand what you said. You ever been talking to somebody, you say something, and they say something back to you, you be like, oh, what I say? Maybe you misunderstand me. Amen. So down the road of peace, I'm going to give you 10 tips for effective communication. One thing listening does, when you listen to somebody, it breaks down that barrier. Because everybody wants to be heard. My wife tells me all the time. My wife tells me a lot. My wife tells me a whole lot. My wife tells me too much. My wife can. My wife. My wife is a wealth of information, and she'll tell me some things. And I pray God. Last night she was giving me. She, my wife is like ancestry.com. She can give you the genealogy of a bug. You tell her that bug. She'll give you the whole genealogy of that bug. She'll run it all the way where that bug originated from. And sometimes, by the time she get to, you know, about the third or fourth generation, I'm kind of like this. I'm trying, man. I'm holding on. I'm trying not to. I'm trying not to do this. <laughs> hey, Amen. Just happened last night. I love my wife. I love you, honey. Hey, Amen. She teaching me how to listen. Because when I don't listen, two or three weeks down the road, she'll say, "I told you that, but you wasn't listening to me." Yes, I would. No, you wasn't. Then I got to repent for lying. Y'all don't do that. I know y'all hear everything, right? To decree and declare into the atmosphere. We got to begin to decree and declare things over our lives. If God said it, we can take it and we can say it. Because when we say it, the Bible says that the angels hearken to the voice of his word. You got ministering angels that some of them are unemployed. They like the government shut down. You ain't gave them nothing to do. They are in the ready. I studied the number four. Look, I studied the number four and four, four, four. And the number four are, is, is, is symbolic, is significant of angels awaiting to go to battle on your behalf. And let me tell you how significant that number was. Now, I know y'all probably going to say, he a preacher, he shouldn't do that. But I remember one night I heard the number four, four, four. And then right after four, 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 something said, put $20 on it. Get $21 tickets. Guess what? I went to bed. I didn't do it. I woke up the next morning. Guess what the number was? 444. 
You know what $21 tickets would have been? I'm going to tell you why I didn't do it. I got religious. I did. I got saved all over again. Oh, no, that ain't the Lord telling me to put that in here. You don't know how God going to bless you. You don't know how he going to send it. Sometimes we got to be willing to embrace what we don't endorse in order to manifest. God used a pagan king, Cyrus, to bless King David with everything that he needed to provide for his son Solomon to build the temple. <laughs> Come on, Cyrus. Where Cyrus at? The Bible says that the wealth of the righteous is being stored up. By the God. Why? Because they know how to get that money. We know how to spend it. They know how to get it and keep it. But there's a transference that's coming. I mean, I'm not telling nobody. Look, I'm not telling you go out and play the number. But if you do, and you hit that joker good, bring your tithes and offering to the storehouse. Amen. We can be real. We can have a real conversation, can't right? Amen. Shoot, I would have, if I'd have had that 20000 I'd have shown up, blessed this house. I'd have blessed this house. I'd have blessed my pastor. I'd have blessed my bishop. I'd have blessed my wife. I'd have blessed me. I might still be blessing some of y'all. Amen? So we got to begin to declare and decree the things that God says about us over our lives. Speak them into the atmosphere. Give your angels something to do. Amen. Amen. Also, there's an anointing for warfare. This anointing that comes with a cost. We're anointed through trials that we survive. It's God-ordained pressure so that he can get stuff and things out of our lives so that grace can flow. Some of the things we're going through ain't the devil. Some of the pressure that we're feeling is God. Look, my wife and Dr. Tasha have been trying to get me to go to the doctor for months. I ain't even told them, but for months the devil been telling me, you're going to have a heart attack. You see that? I got you now. The other day, it's the other day before I came to church, man, I, I normally I take two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar in the morning, right? But Sunday morning, I couldn't find another tablespoon. I was rushing. So I just grabbed a big jug. And I took two big old jugs, slug, and I came in. I was okay. But by the time Elder Ryan got to preaching real good, but that thing got to, I said, ooh, what's that? As soon as I said, ooh, what's that? The devil said, uh -huh, got you there. You're going to die right here. I throw my hands up and I shout, hallelujah. The devil is alive. See, sometimes when y'all, look, sometimes when I'm shouting, I'm shouting something up off me. Because I don't know which praise is going to be. I might be one praise away. I might be one shout away. I might be one hallelujah away. I might be one hand clap away. I might be one act of worship away from my breakthrough. See, I understand that I was saved from the penalty of sin. And that I'm being saved from the power of of sin and that one day I will be saved even from the presence of sin but while I'm down here I'm in the process of sanctification I'm in a process here God's still burning some things off of me I need to catch on fire what it is that's going to get my breakthrough I don't have time to be concerned about what folk think about me when I shout. I don't have time to be concerned about uh, being in somebody's way. I don't have time for that. I need too much from God. I'm not there yet. But I'm on my way. I'm better today than I was yesterday. The devil is a liar and his feet stink. That's just something me and Elder Ron say. <laughs> Amen. So there was a reason why we had to go through some of those tests. There was a reason why we had to go through some of those afflictions. Deal with that infirmity. Go through that circumstance. Suffer for a little while. Deliver me from evil. Reason. 
because it brought us to a point of prayer, a real conversation with God. We got to have a real, look, if you read 80% of the Psalms start out with David lamenting to God. How long, Lord? How long? Lord, have you forgot about me down here? David had real conversations with God. An anointing allows our leaders to pour into us. We got to be. We are containers of this grace. We have to be empty enough that we can be, that God can continue to pour into us through our leaders. Guess what we do that? Guess what happens? Radical obedience. Just because God said it, that's what I'm going to do. Just because my pastor said it, I'm going to do it. Just because my elder said it, I'm going to do it. Believe God and be at peace. Trust in his prophet. I'll give you that that's in Second Chronicles 2020. You need 2020 vision. Believe God. Trust his prophets. Gonna have some short -term. Short -term. Amen. Connecting with like-minded people. Now, I'm not talking about Pookie Ray Ray and them. I'm talking about purposeful people who are motivated to manifest. Eliminating things and people that might disrupt your destiny and upset all your efforts. And a mid experience. Read, read that study up. That's homework time. Read up, study up on the Hamanic spirit, the spirit of the Hamite. Because you're sick. This will hit me. Sick of your own self inflicted wound. I declare in this house, in this atmosphere, no more friendly fire. No more friendly fire. Too many of our soldiers were killed in Vietnam by other Americans. The North Vietnamese didn't kill them. It was somebody behind them that was so scared that they just pow. No more friendly fire. I said it before. If God reveals it to you about someone else, don't say it. Pray it. Don't call me. I want to talk about somebody else. Cause I'm the, my first question I'm going to ask you, well, are they on the line? Are they there with you? Okay, well, we're not getting ready to have this conversation until we can all sit down and talk about it together. And we're going to take the barriers down. And we're going to talk about what the real issue is. And then we're going to pray. We're going to cry. We're going to do whatever we have to do. We're going to stay in that room until we get it fixed. And then when we come out of there, we're going to be family. Because every once in a while in every family, in every family, we have our little scrapes. But that's what causes us to grind. That's what causes us to dig in. It gives us a reason to pray sometimes. Eliminating things and people hmm. that might disrupt your destiny and upset your effort. Determination, a proper response to God. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And thank you. Basically, an unwillingness to let to let go before accomplishment. Remember, Jacob wrestled with God. And what did he say? I'm not gonna let go until you bless me. That kind of grit, that kind of tenacity. An aspect of perseverance that won't allow you to quit before the finish line, regardless of the difficulty. The show of resiliency after a calamity that would normally cause a cease in previous activity. Let me tell you, I'm going to tell y'all in the presence of God and all these witnesses, my wife is my hero. I watched my wife and I watched her stand. She never stopped. She never gave in. She kept going. 
she kept going she kept going even when I know she didn't want to keep going and I watched her I kept waiting for the, I kept waiting I was like I just kept waiting and I just kept waiting I said I gotta be somewhere close I just kept waiting so I just gotta be close. I try to protect her I try to keep people calling they rehearsing it over and over and over but she never stopped that type of grit that type of tenacity that even after a calamity we still dig in we still focus we still running for Jesus we still helping others we still loving on others we still loving in spite of relentless and response able so can I help somebody I told him up there I'm at the fifth point it's about time to go I didn't think I was going to get past this but. so can I just help you because tonight some of us might just need to shake some things off that have tried to latch on to us and attack us because of problems because you're not anointed. The attack is not coming because you're not anointed. The attack is coming because you are. Somebody needs to know that. The moment you said yes to Christ, yes I'll serve him, yes I'll love him, yes I'll do this, yes I'll, yes, I'll dance, yes I'll pray. You put a bullseye on your back, that joker says shoot. <laughs> that joker hates you. He hates God. But because he can't do nothing to God, he tries to mess with God's children. But remember this, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. That, that ain't who I struggle with, that ain't who my fight is with. We wrestle against powers and principalities, spiritual wickedness in high places. That's why the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. That's why we gotta get suited up every day. What y'all call it, suited and booted? You gotta get suited and booted. Mom, I got her. Mom, you got them boots on? Yes, sir, she got her boots on. Guess what she gonna do with them boots on? Y'all did it Sunday. Step on the devil's head. <laughs> so some of us might need to just shake some stuff off tonight. Hey, Amen. You know, when you come into that place of mantle recognition, when you come to that place where you know beyond a shadow of a doubt what God has called you to do, amen, the enemy will always attack your efforts to pursue the things of God. The devil is a liar and his feet still stink. Get back to Bible study. Trying to start back paying your tithes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, start back paying your time. Amen. You trying to walk in forgiveness. You ready to connect and serve in the church. Just getting your attitude adjusted. You, you employing the triple A's. You assessing. You adjusting and you aligning. So somebody may just need to breathe, stretch, shake, and let it go. Hit it tomorrow. On the wind, be broke, that's a oxymoron. Forget a bus, I bought a drop to Toron. G4 is what I saw on. Um, uh, you thinking I ain't hot, you so wrong. Sorry for the prolong, but now life goes on. Long list of hits and it goes on. I wake up and I don't even feel like a star. And man, I'm getting a million of bars. Indeed, I need not Come on, take bring no stress, lie. take a let it go. Man, Y'all gonna make me cry, it's kinda every when you hear me, yeah. your head stand up uh, Come on, y'all look tight Y'all must be all right here with the little hair Show that make me cry Yeah, yeah, yeah Stretch, shake, let it go Breathe, stretch, shake, let it go Wait, let me go Come on, show that make me cry Stretch, shake let it go, breathe, stretch, shake, let it some go. Some days I make thousands, some days I make millions. Spend my day chilling, cool, some sway ceilings. Everybody got they want to know what me. Praise, praise, see? See, see, look, now look. Now I want you to look around the room right now. Look at the faces of the people. Look at the faces of the people that, that engage that. Everybody they smiling. Look, I'm smiling. I don't know what he took off of me. I did something, something fell off. I heard change breaking all around the room. 
I felt loads being lifted all around the room. In the book of Hebrews, it says, lay aside, first of all, the weight. Any, anybody feel lighter now? Hallelujah. So here in the hey Amen. All that was introduction. Here's a message. And we're out of here. Amen. <laughs> so it says, oh, how pleasant it is when brethren and sister dwell together in the bonds of peace or in unity or in togetherness, depending on the translation. It's like the anointing oil that ran down Aaron's beard. That implies, that implies that when we are together and unified, there is an anointing, an empowerment, an enablement to accomplish that touches everyone that is connected from the head down. No one is left out. From the pastor to the pew, each joint supplying one to another, each one bringing their best to the table for the benefit of the whole. Let's bring your best. Synergy. Remember this word. Synergy. Here's what it means. The interaction or cooperation of two or more organizations, substances, or other agents to produce a combined effect greater than the sum of their separate effect. We're greater together. Teamwork. Preach. <laughs> Teamwork make the dream work. Connection. The state of being joined or linked, a feeling of belonging to or having an affinity with a particular person or group. So God is orchestrating some divine hookups that each one might bless one. Hookups that help us get out of the rut, that helps us rise again, that helps us dream again, that together form a unified front. A team that is ready to charge hell with a water pistol and take back and recover all that the enemy has stolen from us. A formidable remnant of people that will pray earnestly for one another, that will stand in the gap, that with sincere willingness to meet the felt need of another. Somebody say a family. That's who we are. We are all in this thing together. I did. I just came to exhort you and encourage you. You guys are a phenomenal family. Man, y'all just don't know for all of you, my sisters, man, how special y'all are to me. Because God sent me here knowing that he was going to call my sister home. And for the one that he took, he gave me a house full of y'all, man. That's why I just love on y'all, man. I hope y'all don't take me the wrong way. Please don't. My wife know me. I, I, I ain't never do nothing that would disrespect my wife. I hope not. But I, that's why I just love on y'all. Because God loved me enough when I look at y'all and I see y'all, I know God loves me. When I look at my wife and I see my wife, I know God loves me. I just want to give you three examples of how powerful when we pray together what happens if you need a suddenly if you need a shaking if you need a show up in your life I want you to go and read if you need a suddenly read Acts 2 and 2 remember on the day of Pentecost when they were in the upper room they were all on one accord they were all praying and it said and suddenly the Holy Spirit faith. Amen. In another, in, in, in the same book, it said, in a shaking, it says they were in, in Acts 4 and 31 when they were all together in one place on one accord prayer. It said the whole house shook. You need something shaking in your house? Get you, get you, get, get you, look, get together, get, get your buddy and start praying. Get with your family members and y'all start praying. Amen. 
And if you need something to show up in your life, remember Peter was in the hole in prison. Now, y'all ain't been to prison. I've been to prison. I've been to the hole. I know what the hole feel like. But our holes was, was, was Trump Tower compared to the, the hole that Peter was in. And he had four guards that was around him. And he was chained. But the people were at, 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 at John Mark's house and they were praying for Peter's release. And guess what? At night, an angel came and took his shackles loose, told him to get up, put his clothes on, follow me. It wasn't until Peter was already outside the prison in the street that Peter thought he was dreaming. And then when he realized that it wasn't a dream, he said, let me go. Let me go to where the people were praying. And then when he got there, he was knocking on the door. And y'all know Rhoda, Rhoda showed up, and she got so excited, she ran back. She didn't even open the door. She ran back and said, hey, it's Peter. It's Peter. They were praying for him. Open the door and let it in. Amen. <coughs> let me close with this. And I, if, if we help somebody tonight, anybody feel a little better? Anybody glad you came? Amen. Has, has God spoken to anybody? I know he showed minister to me. Boy, I, I, boy I, 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 see, I was nervous as a long tail. Kept in a room full of rockets here now, but now I'm happy as a fat kid in Candyland. <laughs> anybody got some chocolate? <sighs> Tomorrow can I get Hebrews 10, 24? Give it to me in the message. I encourage you to go home. Every scripture we gave you tonight, go home. Read it for yourself. Look, I want Elder Ron to have a problem with not having enough CDs on Sunday. This is why I say that. The average person's attention span is only 20 minutes. And of that 20 minutes, we only retain 10% of what we hear. So if we're in this house, and you hear the angel of this house and you believe that he's to you. So it would behoove us to get it, listen to it again and again and again so that you can hear with an attentive ear for the punctilious instruction that just might save your life. Amen. Put it up there again for me. I love this in the message version. I read it in about four or five different translations. <laughs> oh, that's the different one. Hey, Amen. That message, hang on. Put it back up there. Put it back up there. That's okay. Because the one I mean, the, the one I read, it read like this. So let's get to it. Confident that we're presentable inside and out. Let's keep a firm grip on the promises that keep us going. He always keeps his word. Let's see, family. Let's see how inventive we can be in encouraging love and helping out. Not avoiding worshiping together, as some do, but spurring each other on, especially as we see the big day approaching. Potter's house, no one is going to encourage us support us or help us or even pray for us like we're going to do for each other. I declare that thing. We're going to pray for one another. We're going to pray for one another without ceasing. We're going to pray for our passion, pastor and our first family without ceasing. We're going to pray for our bishop without ceasing. We're going to pray for our grand bishop without ceasing. We're going to pray for one another without ceasing. And I promise you, if we'll do that, we're going to see some suddenness, we're going to see some shaking, and we're going to see some show-ups in our lives. Amen? Amen. Father, we just thank you tonight. Give us your word, and you allow us to come and sit at your feet and hear what wonderful things that you say to us, Father God. Father God, I know I'm not the best at it, but I just, Father, I'm just in awe that you would use me anyway that you would use my voice, Father God. Father God, we just thank you. I, Father, I declare 
and decree a blessing. Let me say that clearly. I declare and decree a blessing over these, your children. Father God, do something phenomenal. You are the God that can do exceeding. Think or imagine according to the power that is already at work within us. Father, help us to release that power. I, allow us to embrace the grace and let the grace flow. Help us to shake off that stuff, Father God, that's hindering us, that weight that, that keeps tripping us up, that's slowing us down. And Father God, just let us love one another. Just let us love one another the way we are loved by you. And we will give your name all the glory. We'll give you all the praise. And we'll give you all the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now give, your, give God a hand. Amen. Now give, give yourselves a hand. Matter of fact, turn to your neighbor and applaud them. Amen. All right. I'm done. We're going to give and we're going to go. God bless you guys. Just want to tell you, man, you got.